of our council are present. Uh, the first item on our agenda for this meeting is to review items on the agenda for the April 2nd council meeting. So please refer to that document. Um, as usual, the first several items are liquor license applications, followed by purchasing contracts, and resolutions. Item six is receiving public comment on various ordinances. I don't know why I talk so much during this. You guys, I'm just giving you time <laughs> to look it over to see if you have any questions. Yeah. Item seven is uh, public hearings on resolutions. And currently there are no, there's nothing off of the consent agenda. Now, yes, Mr. Just a note, I think council can see it, just to make sure you understand. Items 7A and 7B are continuance. <clears throat> of a, and um, yes, sorry. And yeah. 7C? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So all the items under 7 are can being continued till May 7th. Okay. And that's a good thing because, as you recall, this was a contested zoning case and there was some other options being considered. And I guess that this indicates that those options are still being explored. Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Thompson. On item 5E, I just wanted to bring that to um, Council's attention that um, Santan is back, is back on the Thank agenda you. for approval uh, for incorporation, something that we've always um, uh, supported and uh, look forward to seeing that uh, move forward. Yeah, Mayor Council, just, and that, thank you, Councilman Thompson, bringing that up. They've requested that we, we had this on the agenda a couple council meetings ago, and they asked for it to be uh, removed, and they've now come back and asked us to uh, put it back on the agenda. Um, there's been some um, opportunities at down at the legislature that may make this possible. Council will, is really voting on an opportunity to allow them to make, have their public vote. So it's not actually definitive, it's more allowing a, a vote to take place for the incorporation. So thank you, Councilman Thompson. Thank you, yes. Uh, any other questions regarding our regular council meeting agenda? If not, the next item on the study session agenda is item two, to hear a presentation and discuss the city's role in preparation efforts for the United States Census for 2020. And we have uh, Mr. Butler and Mr. Robbins here. Welcome. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Uh, it's Certainly it just is happenstance that with the census being in the news the last few days that we come before you, but it's really uh, the, the opportunity that we wanted to take this morning uh, is, is to really walk through how the city is gearing up for the 2020 census. As, as you all know, and Jeff's gonna walk through this in a moment, we have so much state and federal funding tied to making sure that we have an accurate count on the census. And this is now my third census that I've been through. Uh, here at the city and each one of them is unique each one of them is challenging in each one of that each one of them requires great data and a lot of hard work and so Jeff's going to walk you through how we're you know three years in advance preparing for a month in April of 2020 and then of course answering any questions that you all may have so with that I'll turn it over to Jeff Robbins who is the lucky or unlucky guy <laughs> who gets to do all this work leading into 2020. Well, luckily I don't have to do it alone. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> um, so Mayor, Council Members, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Some of the information that we're gonna be sharing with you is new and some of it you already know very well. And I think the thing that you all know very well is that this can have a very large impact on our budget. So um, our state shared revenues come through population and, and they're determined that way. And so in our fiscal estimate for the end of fiscal year, 1718, excuse me, the year end estimate, was that the city would receive $165 million in state shared revenues. So not an insignificant amount. That includes things like urban revenue sharing, uh, vehicle license tax, highway user revenue funds, and state sales tax. And um, an estimate from the League of Arizona Cities and Towns suggests that uh, for every person that we count or that we miss, it, it's an equivalent to $330 in, city, in the city budget every year. 
and we only count that every 10 years. So if you extrapolate that, it's, it's quite a bit of money. And our average household size is 2.69 persons. So again, it's extrapolated over 10 years. It's just under $9,000 per household that we, plus or minus, that we count or miss it. So it's very important that we have a complete count. The other part of this is representation apportionment in Congress. In 2010, we gained a seat in the House, and some projections have us gaining another seat, Arizona, in, uh, in the House of Representatives. And then there's also the matter of $13 billion in federal funding just for the state of Arizona. So many of the programs that our residents rely on, like SNAP, Medicaid, Medicare Part B, SCHIP, Highway Planning and Construction, Head Start, Section 8, and so many others depend on um, population for to decide how that they are distributed. So it matters quite a bit. Um, so the census is going to be historic for many reasons. Um, the most, the, probably the largest, is how we respond to the census. For the first time ever, people will be able to respond by internet and by phone. And so uh, to walk you through how this will work is that it's just prior to the open response date, which is March 23rd, 2020, everybody's going to receive some information from the Census Bureau. And it's going to say, all right, here's the URL you can go to to respond to the census. And there's also um, ways that you can respond by phone. If people do not respond by internet or by phone, then the Census Bureau will mail them a traditional paper form. If they don't respond by the traditional paper form, then an enumerator will be sent to their house, somebody who goes out and knocks doors and, and encourages them to respond. If the enumerator can't get a hold of the person, then for the first time ever, the Census Bureau will use third person data, third party data, excuse me, to fill in the gaps. The Census Bureau has not identified at this time what those sources will be, but they will um, essentially get us the best head count we can. In 2015, there was a limited test that was done in Mesa, and this map is a, a little hard to see, but basically what we're looking at is everything from the 60 out to Power Road north of University was included in this limited test. So um, that's a little bit of districts, a little bit of districts three, four, and two, almost all of district one, and a big part of district five were included in this test. And, and what we're seeing is very similar to what they were expecting, which is internet response is by far the, the largest way that people are responding to the census, uh, with about 4% uh, response by phone and about 10% by mail. And um, things we got some great insights from this data, actually. Uh, one of the interesting things in the bottom left-hand quadrant, there's a tract out there that had a 26% response rate by phone, which is very unusual. So we looked into that and said, all right, well, why, why did that occur? And it turns out that a lot of our seniors prefer to respond by phone. So those are the kinds of insights through data that we're able to glean. And hopefully, we can use that when trying to market and encourage people to respond to the census. Right now, we are engaged in the LUCA operation, which is the local update of census addresses. And essentially what this is is that the Census Bureau has a list of all of the addresses that they think exist in Mesa. And then we at the city, we have our own list through buildings that we've permitted. And they've sent us their data, their list, and said, all right, check it. And now we're going to cross-check their data and make sure that they have everything on our list that we have. We are also working very closely with MAG, Maricopa Association of Governments. They've been a great partner. They're going to be pro providing a third check on this data. And so I, I guess what I'm trying to get across is that it's going to be a very robust operation. And we're going to make sure that every address that is out there um, exists on the list. And again, why that matters is because if it's not on the list, they aren't going to know to send enumerators or the, the paper form. It won't arrive. So we, are, um, we have a great team working on that in the city. And we're going to get everybody counted that we can. Yeah, and Mayor and Council, to that point, um, we, we can't stress how important the data sets are. When we've had issues in the past, it's, it's really started with the data and not having accurate household counts on, on the rolls that MAG has received. Uh, we went through a whole process uh, several years ago. I can't remember if it was the, the 2010 or when we did a 2005 mid-decade census, but uh, long story short, we had some faulty data sets and that really decreased um, our counts and we had to go back and correct that and it was a very difficult process to do on the back end and so that's why Jeff and the team in, in IT and others are working together to ensure on the front end our data is good so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. 
Um, so again, the census, it's pretty obviously conducted mostly by the Census Bureau, but the city does have a role in this process. And uh, the first thing we've already talked about, which is getting the right data to the Census Bureau. And the other part that we're gonna spend most of the time talking about with the rest of this presentation is the Complete Count Committee. And that is a committee that is formed uh, by the council and is going to try and educate and encourage people to respond to the census. So again, it's, it's a very diverse team. And we wanna stress that, that that's very important that it's a, it's a cross section of our community. And the reason why that's so important is because we need to understand um, what each of these different, what makes people tick and, and, and how they're motivated to respond to the census. So it should include people from um, the media, from community organizations, education, healthcare, the Latino population, and so many others to make sure that um, we're able to come up with a strategy that is effective and efficient. And uh, mayor and council, so to that point, I mean, we're going to be looking for your input. The mayor, of course, will be the person in his role to, to make those recommendations, but I, I know with community leaders, with faith-based community, with, with different organizations in, in each of your districts that do public outreach and want to ensure accurate counts, those are the types of names and input that will be really important as we work throughout the entire city to make sure that we, we have diverse representation of all of those organizations moving forward. So um, one of the things that, that we wanted to point out is that our complete count committee is tailored to Mesa and the strategy is going to be specific to our city. And so there are some suggested activities from the Census Bureau that, that this group can take on, but again, it can, it can do anything that we think is the most appropriate. Some of the things that they have suggested is to develop the comprehensive plan and the strategy for encouraging and educating response. Um, identifying different myths, different concerns that may exist, and then finding information to try and counter those and, and to encourage people to respond. It can also uh, be through fundraising, and we have marketing that we'd like to do, and so being able to have donors who can help with that is gonna be important. And also, Mesa hosts some of the best events in the entire valley, and so having a presence at those events um, to educate and to make people aware that this is coming and, and why it's important um, can be very effective. From a very high level um, bird's eye view here, our timeline is right now in 2018, we're in the midst of LUCA. That's the, again, that local update of census addresses. We hope to form the complete count committee here um, shortly, probably the summer would be the best time to form that committee. And then to have that committee create an action plan by early 2019, which then they can put into play in mid 2019. Uh, that gives us just short of a year in kind of education and outreach. Uh, Hyper-local advertising would begin optimally in 2020. Uh, the self-response opens up in March 23rd, and then April 1st is our census day. And then pretty shortly after that, the whole thing winds down. They start closing out the local offices in late July. So that is where we are headed. Mayor, Council, thank you so much for your time. We're available for any uh, questions you may have at this time. Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Scott and Jeff. When you talk about the special events and how to generate interest, how is that budgeted? How, who pays for that or how does that come forward? Mayor, um, Council Member Freeman, that's, we'll certainly be working closely with the city manager and with the budget office. There, there will be expenses that go along with this. We, we haven't established a full uh, budget yet, especially as it gets later into outreach uh, that will come really more robustly in 2000 and, uh, 2019 and 2020 when, when the, we will have to do things, micro-targeting on social media that comes with the cost, uh, other outreach. I'm sure Council Member Heredia, who's done this work, could tell us you know, some of the, the other activities that would be very important. But that's what we'll be ramping up over the next uh, year or so, trying to, trying to bring those costs in line. Um, I think it's, frankly, um, a minuscule cost relative to what we stand to lose if we don't have an accurate count. So it, it, it won't be... Uh, it won't be such a substantial cost that uh, that it will you know have a, a major impact, but there will be funding that comes along with that. Uh, just, what was the <coughs> estimate uh, under count for City of Mesa in 2010? Do we have estimates uh, on that? We know that it was in 2000, our response rate was 68%, and in 2010, our response rate was 71%. To give you, that's our voluntary response, mm -hmm. and then there was follow-up after that. Um, to give you some idea across the valley, uh, Phoenix, their response in 2010 was 70%. Um, 
Glendale was 71%, and then Tucson was 71%. So we all hover right about 70% for the voluntary response. Do we have a percentage? Uh, usually, so I worked in uh, the 2010 for the U.S. Census Bureau in 2010 as a partnership specialist, and uh, usually cities had a kind of a, a percentage of what was their undercount. Usually, undercount rather than overcount. Yeah. But uh, you know that, as you said, Jeff, uh, over 10 years, it's tens of millions of dollars that you lose uh, for your local community. So it's important to identify these locations uh, where potential uh, undercount uh, populations and minorities usually are, uh, you know, the hardest to reach, uh, uh, low-income folks. Uh, so identifying those uh, uh, pockets of opportunities there to reach out and educate and inform the public is, is important. So any any percentage that we have or? There it, or <clears throat> Councilman Heredi. You asked, that's a very good question. I, I know there was a number. Yeah. I can't, I okay. don't remember. We'll, we'll look it up, but okay. you're right. I mean, it was, it's concerning because there yeah. was an undercount. Um, but that's why we want to, we want to do better than we've done in the past. And that's why we need to start early. It's the awareness. It's getting people comfortable with answering the questions. Um, and now that with the internet, um, you know, maybe those populations that are most, uh, uh, difficult to get to the count, I, you know, I don't know if the internet's going to be the answer for them. Um, so we're going to have to be creative. We need the community and we need this complete count community to help us either through faith-based um, organizations or community organizations, how we reach out. Um, because frankly, uh, by getting the count more complete, allows us to have receive more allocation of dollars and typically those are the dollars that can most benefit the populations that are the most difficult to reach. So, um, and just, you know, we just had the presentation on the housing plan and <laughs> that's direct formula relates to population. So that's what we're gonna need everybody's, the community's help. We wanted to start early. Jeff has been now brought on uh, full time in the city manager's office to do this and other projects, but we wanted to give a full, get a, now really get a focus on this. We'll be bringing to the council some um, specific um, events, programs, um, but we want to get the committee together too because this is not just staff coming up with this idea. We need the community to help us figure this out and how it's got to be multicultural. It's got to be, have you know, multiple languages and so we need all of those um, ideas brought to the table to help us. It sounds like we're way ahead of schedule, but I don't think we are because there's just so much work to be done. So. That's, that's, but that's a great point. And I, there is a number out there and I'll just have yeah, to see if we sure. can dig it up. Okay. It, Mayor, it, oh, sorry. The other question is, are, is the U.S. Census uh, Bureau think, you know, thinking of opening an office in Mesa? I know in 2010, mm -hmm. they had one in East Mesa as far as extension to the Phoenix office. Uh, are they looking to as, have another office? So part of the, the 2020 census is that they, they've had to keep costs at the same level as 2010. And so um, one of the ways that they're saving money is by opening fewer offices. There will be an office in Phoenix, but as far as I'm aware, uh, there will not be a, an, a local office here in Mesa. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Do we have, um, from previous census, do we have, do we know er the areas that um, that we're having difficulty in getting to respond. Can you can yes. you get us each of those areas for our respective districts, and then maybe we can come up and formulate a plan on who we need to reach out to in our districts to to make sure that that happens. We have excellent data per tract, um, either knowing the demographics that are hard to reach in each tract and what the responses rates were in 2010. So we'd be happy to provide that data for you. Thank you, Jeremy and Mr. Luna. I heard that there was a uh, new question that was going to be on the, uh, the census thing that are you a legal citizen? Can you guys comment on what you believe that impact will have and how you plan on approaching that? Mayor, Councilmember Whitaker, I knew someone was going to ask this question, <laughs> so, th so thank you. I, we also know that we can help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask that. I, I win that bet. No. Uh, <laughs> No, in, in all seriousness, though, we, we don't know. It's been 70 years uh, since that question has been included in, in, a, um, in a census. And I think um, we're in the same situation as uh, other communities and states all across the nation trying to understand the implications of that. And, and no matter where people are on the spectrum of that question, the one thing we've uh, reiterated time and time again is that we need an accurate count. And, and 
and selfishly in Arizona, we, we need to ensure that from the pure dollar and cent standpoint that comes to city services through shared revenue. So part of this decision now, knowing that it will be included in the census unless, I, I, as you may have seen, there's some states and municipalities that may be challenging it in court, but assuming uh, the Commerce uh, Secretary's decision stands, then um, we do have time hopefully to adjust uh, to outreach, uh, knowing that could potentially be on there and, and make sure that we're targeting areas that could be sensitive to that question. Thank, thank you, Mr. Luna. Um, Mr. Whitaker brings a good point because that was the whole issue at uh, the National League of Cities, whether the, the citizenship question was going to be asked, which is going to be a challenge for us. If that's going to be asked, we're going to have minority communities that aren't going to respond to the census, which is unfortunate because these are dollars that, that come to our community, so we're going to have to work through that. And are we gonna open our public facilities, our libraries, and you're gonna be working with the schools because that's a safe place where people like to be able to do that. We still have a digital divide in this community, and so we wanna make sure that we provide access to computers so they can fill out the census. Yeah, Mayor, uh, Council Member, Vice Mayor Luna, um, yes, to all of the above, and, uh, and w that's one of the some of the information that we think is important to get from the complete count committee. Uh, we, we want robust representation from uh, schools and from the education community. And so I'm sure outreach efforts of, of how we can tap into the network and communication that all of our school districts have and, and individual schools have, especially in maybe hard to reach uh, areas will be important as we move forward and including the city resources that you spoke about as well. The, uh, it, and just to add as well, um, Mayor and Council, to what um, Mr. Brady said, we, we know probably, uh, and we'll get you the exact numbers, but if you think, for example, if our undercount was even uh, 10,000 people, using Jeff's numbers, you can extrapolate you know, exactly how much uh, shared revenue that has uh, potentially cost us over, over the last decade. And so that's, that's another reason to Council Member Heredia's point that those undercount numbers are so important. And one of the things I, I believe that we'll ask the complete count committee to do is, is to set that goal. If we've been uh, anywhere from 67 to 71% response rate, I mean, even, even a number like 75% response rate, um, higher than the average in the Valley, but each, each percentage means tens of millions of dollars. And so that's why I think a, a robust goal coming out, a realistic but robust goal coming out of the complete count committee could be really important to, to make sure that we're maximizing uh, the, the, that revenue and, and getting the most accurate count we can get. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I just want to say uh, amen to, to the comments that we've heard a, a moment ago. I, I think regardless of where you're at, on the political spectrum when it comes to illegal immigration, it, that there's a lot of selfish motivation for everyone who lives in Mesa to make sure that we are do everything we can to avoid being undercounted because it's significant f funding. I think there's parts of the country that dread the census every year because they are parts of the country where people are moving from to move to Mesa, Arizona. Uh, but for the same reasons, we need to be very uh, vigilant in, in making sure that we do the best job we can to, uh, to educate people. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the litigation brings and whether or not the, immigra the immigrant question remains on the census or not. But for now, I think we have to assume that it is, which means that we have to be very proactive in uh, targeting at, you know, those populations that might be uncomfortable responding to the government knocking at your door asking about your immigration status. Um, so I, I had the privilege of serving on this committee uh, at, during the last census. It was a great uh, experience, uh, got a lot out of it. So I, I, I would please ask the, the council to look at, uh, I, I guess geography is one part of it. There might be pockets of our city that are underrepresented, but it's probably more uh, communities within our districts, uh, ethnic communities, religious communities, uh, immigrants, non-immigrants. Uh, who, who do you know in your districts that we can add to this committee, this complete count committee, to mitigate against the potential that people will be scared and not want to participate in the census? Because that's going to have a very serious impact on all of us financially if we have an undercount in our census. Mm -hmm. So um, please uh, scratch your heads and give us all the good names you can so that we have a, a, a robust and effective committee. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Anything else you need to add? 
That's it, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. So begin, when, when do we want to officially form that committee? Or right now and for the, over the next few months, I guess? We'll be, we'll be coming back to you okay. to form that and the target is summer. But we'll work with uh, the city manager to to come back to you at a time. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. And, and this and is Mayor, not I should I should clarify not to interrupt, but mm -hmm. but right now, in until we form the committee, right now is the time we'd love to get the input from council on those particular groups. And so Jeff can be your point person uh, that your council assistants or or yourself can reach out to Jeff if if there's names and organizations that you'd like to have included, we will start accepting those uh, right after this meeting ends and mm -hmm. want, want to make sure we, we get a, like we were saying late, earlier, robust list of, of organizations throughout the community. Great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is approval of minutes from an executive session held, executive sessions held jan January the 11th and February the 8th <coughs> and March the 5th. Is there a motion out of effect? Thank you, Mr. Glover and Mr. Freeman. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is to hear reports on meetings and conferences attended. Council. Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip something? Yeah, Thank you. Minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> item four is acknowledge receipt of minutes of various boards. Is there a motion to that effect? Thank you, Mr. Glover and Mr. Luna. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you for uh, helping me here. Item five is to hear reports on meetings and conferences attended. Council, uh, anything you'd like to share with us? Mr. Luna. Uh, just really quick, is Corrine Nystrom here? Uh, we had a wonderful um, Falconfield Open House this weekend. We have thousands and thousands of people there, so each year gets better and better. So I want to thank her staff and uh, for providing that to our community. It's a great way to see airplanes and what a wonderful airport we have at Falconfield. So. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation to join you. That was, and you know what? I was impressed with the car show. It yeah. was the best car show I'd seen, and it was at an air show. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a great event. Uh, anything else you'd like to share, Council? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Uh, we have a, a, a groundbreaking this morning for Quinn Creek High School out in Eastmark. Um, so that's that's going to be huge for my district, um, especially for the those that are in the Queen Creek School District. Right now, they have to travel. Um, a lot of miles to get to, to get to high school, so we'll have one right in our community now. So it's awesome. That is exciting. Other announcements? Yes, Mr. Luna. We have groundbreaking too at Orbit Orbital ATK, so that's going to be a real exciting. They've expanded their facilities, so they do a great job there in District Five. It's going to be a busy morning. Yeah. Anything else, Council? All right, the next item on our agenda is the schedule of future meetings and general information. Mr. Brady. Just a reminder, we do have a council meeting, well, study session and council meeting uh, Monday. We will have an early start because we have some items uh, to present to council. We're uh, presenting the proposed uh, budget to you um, before the council meeting that, um, on, mo on Monday, April 2nd. So, okay. see you then. Thank you. Great. Thank you. The council. Uh, what do we talk about, Jill? Five? Yeah, I think we're looking at 5 o'clock right now. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Council? If not, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Glover. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 